3D modeling isn't as difficult as you imagine it probably is. It does take a lot of skill, but there are some things that you can create in Blender which take pretty much no effort whatsoever. It's basically like cheat mode for making great renders. What I'm going to show you today is something that you can do over and over and over again. You can change the layout of the creatures, you can change the colors, you can do lots of little tweaks and bits and bats and you can make a hundred of these. You could do one of these every single day for a hundred days and have something completely fresh to show your friends. It's definitely not the best model in the world but it's certainly something that people will look at and they will click like. So if you're a beginner and you're wanting to get those likes on Instagram, those likes on Facebook, you know wherever you share your your creations then you might want to give this a shot because each time you do this, each time you make one of these you're gonna cement the idea into your head and there's a couple of things in here which you'd need to know when you're learning Blender and the more you do these things the more you'll experiment, the more you will change change things and before you know it you'll be creating marvelous creatures of all different shapes sizes and magnitudes so let's start off by adding an icosphere this is going to be the main body of the creature all i'm going to do is grab it into position and then we're going to add another icosphere scale that down move it forward on the y-axis grab it on the x bring it in a little bit and then we're going to use a mirror modifier and you're going to mirror that across that object so there we've got the front paws and probably we should make these just a little bit smaller on the Z and then we can shift D to duplicate these bring them back on the Y axis now I think the back back feet should be a little bit longer so we'll scale these on the Y and then we'll rotate them out like this rotate scale on the Y again okay so we've got big back feet little front paws and a head right so now what we want to do is let's add in a UV sphere grab that move that on the Z in edit mode just so we don't mess with the orientation rotate X 90 bring it forward scale it down a little bit i'd say then we can just move this into position here All right so now if we press w and we shade smooth go back into edit mode and let's make a material we'll call this solera that's the white bit and we can just make it pure white and we can crank up the specular crank down the roughness and if we go into shaded mode we can see it's all reflective there which is pretty cool um back in edit mode so you've got the central vert selected control and plus and do that a few times add another material we can call this pupil change that to black assign specular up roughness down and now we have an eyeball super easy now what we're going to do we're going to grab these grab this we're going to apply the mirror modifiers first so Control a to apply the mirror modifiers on both of those and then we can join those to the body so that's all one part now what color should we make this body let's see let's make this a lovely fluffy pink okay nice and easy we're going to put that roughness up specular down and we'll call that skin add another Another material and we'll call that hair we'll change this to principled hair and we're going to increase the value there we're going to make that nice hot pink okay next we're going to come across into our particle tab here and add a new par particle system and change the hair and it's a little bit too long so we will we should probably make this a little bit more 5000 hair length 0.1 it's usually a good number and a bit of noise to the whole thing a little bit of chaos which is always nice come down the children do that as interpolated in the roughness we can just add a little bit on random random roughness maybe 0.2 and then in the hair shape we'll put the diameter root as 0.1 we'll make a new vertex group and we'll call this density come into weight paint forward slash for local mode and we're just going to paint just on the face here just where the eyeball should be just like that let's just get rid of that one we don't want that one on there and now we go into weights and we can invert them okay come back into object mode and back over to the physics that sorry the particle tab come to vertex groups density and change that to density come out of local mode and we can see the hair is no longer growing through the eyeball so what we can do now is we can just position the eye where the hair isn't so that looks about right. What we can actually do, I'm going to edit mode and I'm just going to rotate that up a little bit. It's easier than repainting it, easier to move it. Grab on Z so the hair stops about there. 
bring that back just a little bit. Okay, and now let's make another mesh. Let's just make a cube. Come into the side, control two to add a subdivision to it. I'm just gonna grab this out of the way in edit mode. Let's just put a loop in there. And all we're gonna do now is just grab this, grab this on the Y, and then grab this on the Z. Select that loop, scale it down a little bit. Stick it in there, just like that. We can just probably like rotate this a little bit, scale it down a little bit. And press W, shaved smooth, add a brand new material. Call it tongue, base color. Gonna be kind of like an orangey red. And we're gonna give it some roughness. And yeah, there we go. Nice little tongue there. We could probably do a loop cut here and bevel it. Take that, Alt and S. Bring that right in like so. Just got a nice little crease down there. Next, what we want to do is Control P to parent that to it, just so that is in place. Same with the eyeball, parent all that together. So it all moves as one. Next, simply add plane, scale it by say 10. Don't worry that it's cut off the bottom. That's, that kind of works in our favor. Go into edit mode and we're gonna grab these two edges. We're gonna extrude on the Z axis and take these edges again. Control B to bevel, give it a million, million uh, divisions on there and then shade smooth on that one. Get rid of that default light there because we don't like that. Press N to open the tools and camera to view. We can adjust this as such. Um, so if we can come to scene lights and scene well to give us an idea as what's what. We can add in some lights now. So let's do an area light. Grab this, move this up and let's scale that up. It's nice to add a track to constraint on it as well. So let's track it to the eyeball. So wherever this moves, it's gonna point there. We're gonna need some more energy on this. So we'll say maybe 250 perhaps. Yeah, that looks all right. And let's add another light. Grab that, same dealio. Add a constraint, track to, track to that. Make that 100. And so what we'll do is we'll add a little bit of color to make this a nice kind of blue. We sort of not quite contrasting with this. I mean, maybe if we come up to here, perhaps. Mm, actually, let's have it like nice warm color behind it. And then we'll have one more light over here. Track it to the eyeball again. Grab it, give it maybe 150. And we'll make this a blue. Okay, just adjusting the roughness on the tongue just to make it look a little bit more slobbery. I don't want it too slobbery though. And also, I think it look good like that maybe. Hmm, yeah, yeah, love it like that. That looks kind of cool. Okay, now let's have a render and see what this looks like. Okay, so there's the first render. It's looking cute as anything, but there's plenty that we can do to this. So we can see here, we've got the harsh lines of the icosphere. The tongue is looking, looking very plasticky, not exactly what we want. But if you wanted to stop there and call it a day, you'd, you'd have something half decent to show off your mates. But we're uh, we're not happy until it looks amazing. So let's go back into 3D. Right, so first things first, we'll address the, the issue with the, uh, the icosphere. So let's just control two and that will subdivide it make it nice and smooth which is uh, which is always a good thing now what we'll probably say is apply this straight up so that will immediately give us better results what we also want to do is come back into weight paint because there's a few strands that are just kind of sneaking through so we need to make sure our weight is zero and we just need to repaint around the edges with the higher amount of geometry this is going to make it a little bit more precise than it was previously you don't want to do too much you don't want to go too far because otherwise you'll just see the skin and you kind of don't want to see that too much you just want to get as much hair in as you possibly can so we can refine that if it causes us issues but for the minute it's okay Let's come back out of white paint mode. I'm going to preview again. So let's focus on this tongue. So what we can do is we can create a horizontal split and get a, yeah, a new shader editor up. So let's start off by adding in with shift A, a texture. We're going to do a Voronoi texture. It's one of my favorite textures. It's uh, We can actually preview it if we uh, add a mapping node with control T and that's if you you need to enable the the node wrangler add-on so just go into file and then sorry edit preferences add-ons type in node wrangler click the checkbox it's totally free just get that enabled and it just say it gives you a few of these little shortcuts like for example control and shift click gives gives the option to move what's previewed so there we go so what we're trying to do here is add a little bit of texture um so I think if we add another the, a noise texture and we plug that into there so you see that's giving us kind of like rings and so we can take down the randomness a little bit as well maybe not all the way and we'll bring up the scale to make lots of little rings so what we can do is add in a, a converter we can put a color ramp in there it's going to make it black and white again what essentially we're doing is we're making like a little like a mask and we can adjust the contrast with this we won't do this too much just yet until we've actually got some um right let's plug this in into, I'm going to plug this into the rough 
roughness. So you can see there we've got some sections where we've got little kind of like rings on there to get a little bit of a texture and then we can see that it's reflecting some of the light. So if we put the specular right up we might be able to see and then we can just adjust the color ramp to get the, the right kind of effects that we're going for. So we can flip it by just switching around these two if we wanted the, the shiny bits to be elsewhere. So you can have it like super shiny and slightly rough or we can I think I prefer it just like this. So it's a nice little texture on there to do make it look a little less plasticky and then what we can do is we can add in a converter and nope a vector sorry vector bump pop that in there feed that into the height and then feed the normal output into the normal input and you see there it gives us a very very textured effect maybe too intense in fact so you can dial down the strength a little bit just until it looks about right so that looks okay i think now i'm wondering should we maybe clip this how does that look? Oh yeah, I think actually now that looks a little bit better. It looks a little bit like wetter there, doesn't it? We don't want it too wet, but just enough so it reflects a little bit and shows that the tongue's got a little bit of texture. We can change the noise a little bit as well, so we can have much bigger kind of grooves in there, which is kind of nice. Just in case of adjusting until it looks about right. I think that looks pretty cool, right? Yeah, it looks like slop, like a rough slobbery tongue. So let's try rendering this again and see what this looks like. So while it's still rendering, we can see that that tongue looks so awesome, right? It still looks very solid, but I guess I guess it's okay. If it was a stuffed toy, that probably would be like a solid piece of plastic, I suppose. But there's something we can do, I think, that can that will actually address this. I'll show you that in just one moment. Okay, so that's it rendered. Not 100% happy with the hair, but we will address that as well. Okay, so let's go back into the 3D view part. Right, with this tongue, what we're going to do is we're going to play with the subsurface. So we're just going to copy that color there, and we're going to increase the subsurface to 1. So you just need to adjust just a little bit and what the subsurface scattering does is it makes the light pass into the objects and reflect in a different way so you can see here it kind of has a little bit of translucency to it i suppose so i'm just to keep adjusting that just to get the right level of wet wet and rough and i think that's probably as good as i would ever want it Okay, so the hair, it seems to be bunching in places. So let's maybe make this 10,000. Let's see how this renders. That is not looking too bad. Okay, we can do better though. We can do better. So first thing, let's go to the eyeball and let's select everything, shift D, and then I'm just gonna scale it up so ever so slightly and rotate Z 90. And then I'm just gonna press P selection, make it his own object. And we're gonna delete this. I'm gonna change that to skin. In front view mode, go back into edit mode. And then if we turn on here the X-ray, go to vertex select, and we're gonna try and grab all of these and just delete them. And so we can add on next a solidify modifier to give it a little bit of girth just bring that in a little bit and now we can just rotate this just a little bit back here and that's just so that it doesn't get things in its eye and it can blink it kind of looks like he's wearing a coat i suppose or something yeah all right let's turn off x-ray mode it's going back into white paint there's a spied a few little hairs sneaking through we need to get rid of back into object mode okay we could probably, let's just disable the particles just for a few minutes, just to make things nice and smooth in the viewport. I'm thinking if we come into sculpt mode, and so we're sculpting on the main body here, what we can do is we can press M for mask, and we can just, link, if we increase this, kind of get an idea as to where we need to be drawing. So the geometry isn't too high on this actually. So we should probably, I'm gonna remesh this. So we're gonna put a voxel size of 0.04, Five. Get this all nicely and remeshed. Hmm. Actually, I'm going to go a little bit further. 0.01. Remesh that. Right. Just going to undo a couple of times. Remesh. 0.01. Right, let's start again with that mask there. That's much nicer. So we can draw like a mouth on here. And then if we press A, we can invert that mask. Get that out of the way. And so we can just like go to move this. We'll just move that in, right? And it'll give us a little mouth. Now how this will fit with, yeah. So his eye, the eyeball's kind of like in his mouth a little bit, but it's where we want it to be with the tongue. So we can, we can clear the mask and we can just use this elastic deform just to drag that down a little bit, just like that. Right, and who is smart enough to know what I need to do next? Put your hands up. In fact, put it in the comments what you think I need to do next if you know what the next thing we need to do is. Right, for those of you who said we need to white paint it again, you're absolutely right. 
So what has happened here is because we've remeshed it, it's changed all of the data in the vertex groups. So um, we need to density. Now let's make a nice small brush. Let's pull that up to 100. Just give that a nice... In fact, let's make it a bigger brush. Much easier like that. And it might be helpful if we have the eyeball in so we can kind of see where we need to be. So we'll take it really small and just go around the edge here. Just up here. This is just like a guide more than anything else. Bring it around here. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be neat. Just kind of close. Going back into local mode with the forward slash key. Increase the size of our brush. Just fill all of this in. Almost done. Just working around the edges with a slightly smaller brush. Just zooming in to change the effective size if necessary. Almost done. There we go. Now we just need to come to weights. Invert again. Coming out of solo mode, or local mode I should say. Back into object mode, into the particle emitter, and got density. Perfect. Right, so you can see now with all the extra geometry, it's kind of fuzzy. A lot more fuzzy in the viewport, so this is going to be good. Right, let's give it a render. Now I'm looking at this as it's rendering. I don't know about you, but I think we should probably put some hair on the eyeball. What do you reckon? I say, yeah, let's do it. So I'm going to come out of that render before it finishes. And all we can do is we can just come into object mode and we can join these just like that. And in edit mode. And all I've done there is I've joined it into the mesh, added the extra vertices to the vertex group. Let's save and render again. There we go. That's much better. So there we go. That is looking absolutely gorgeous with nice little bits of hair here and there. Look at it. Is that not the cutest little thing that you've ever made? So there we go. That's how you fake it in Blender. If you found this useful, interesting, just entertaining in general, then maybe hit that thumbs up button and it'll tell YouTube that you want more content like this in the future. Just like from anybody, not just me. But if you want specific content from me, then hit that subscribe button and then YouTube will like push my content to you when it feels it's the content that you're searching for so yeah uh leave me a comment if you're new to blender or you learned something new and i'll see you in the next one